<laughs> okay, um, welcome everybody to this workshop on characteristic P methods in algebraic geometry and commutative algebra. This is, of course, the second week in a larger program here at ICTP, and I've heard that things have been going very well last week. Uh, for me, this is my fourth time here at ICTP, and I must say I very much appreciate the mission of ICTP and what ICTP is doing for mathematics worldwide. Uh, this is a conference on characteristic P methods, and we are very sorry that uh, Mel Hoxter and Craig Unicke are not able to attend in person, but since this is an event in characteristic P methods, uh, such an event can do nothing but celebrate the tremendous contributions of our two colleagues. Um, so to start, uh, our first speaker, I'm very happy to um, introduce my old friend, uh, David Kalkowski from the University of Michigan, uh, sorry, Mich the University of Missouri, <laughs> the same. Almost. Uh, almost the same. <laughs> and he'll talk about uh, the analytic spread of filtrations. Mm, Please, okay. okay, thank you, uh, uh, Bernd, and uh, th thank you for uh, the, the organizers for inviting me to be in this uh, wonderful place. Uh, one thing, practical thing, is I, I forgot. Uh, I was told that there is some concern about where I write on the blackboards for the camera. Does anybody know if that's, uh, if, if that's an issue or not? I can write anywhere in the camera. Just Okay, okay, that's good. Okay, maybe it will be today. We'll see. <laughs> okay, so pr if I go over here, somehow it should shift. Does it pick it up? Can it read this? But I don't see really, it's sort of a long angle shot. Oh, you can see, okay, perfect, okay. So now I, I can start. Okay, so uh, this is on uh, uh, filtrations. Uh, analytic spread. And I have a uh, new uh, theme that I've added. Uh, and most of this is with uh, Prangama Sarkar, which I will uh, mention. So uh, is this, this can be seen everywhere? It's, okay. Okay, you're right at front though, so, but no, uh, from the, Ah, okay, okay, good. All right, so uh, what is a filtration? I is equal I sub N uh, on a uh, Noetherian ring R is a sequence uh, R is equal to I naught contained in I1, and so on. And the critical condition is I m times I n is contained in I m plus n. So this uh, allows one to form a kind of uh, Ries uh, ring of this, which is uh, uh, from, from this, which I'll mention later. OK, so what are some examples of this? There's the, uh, if a I is an ideal, Uh, there's the iatic filtration of powers of I, and this is the most uh, very classical and most Im important one. Okay, and there's a, um, another uh, type of filtration I want to talk about. So if we take R to be a uh, domain, or uh, the way this is usually used is if you uh, start out with R and you mod out by P, where P a minimal prime. Uh, then, um, and if I take uh, V a uh, valuation, uh, on the quotient field, which has the property that 
uh, non-negative. Uh, on R, uh, and it has the, the property that uh, the transcendence degree uh, of the quotient field of R mod uh, the maximal ideal of the valuation ring over R, well, of the valuation residue field of the valuation ring over the residue field of the quotient field, uh, this is equal to the height of, um, of this prime ideal uh, minus one. So if this happens, this is called a divisorial valuation. Okay, so this, this in itself like, seems like sort of a strange and unmotivated uh, uh, definition maybe, but it has the uh, uh, in the case for uh, reasonable rings, this has a very nice uh, interpretation. So if R is, uh, uh, is excellent, uh, then uh, V is divisorial uh, if and only if uh, there exists uh, some map pi from X to spec of R, which is the uh, blow up of an ideal. Okay, well, X is normal and, and the valuation ring of V is going to be local ring of, a, of a E, where E, I'll, I'll call it a co-dimension one sub variety. Of X, so if you will, an integral uh, integral subscheme of codimension cl integral closed subscheme of X of codimension one. Okay, so from this uh, you can construct. Uh, well, first off, we need to know the concept of valuation ideal, uh, and this is. Uh, if I take a lambda in R, this is going to be the elements uh, X in R uh, such that the value of X is bigger and equal to lambda. Okay, so in fact, uh, uh, these divisorial valuations uh, are always discrete, rank one discrete. So in fact, uh, this is equal to the roundup. Of, of lambda. So there's some technical reason we'll see why we want to consider this. Uh, and div divisorial valuations are discrete. Okay, so now there's a uh, concept of a divisorial uh, filtration. Uh, I, which will be I sub n. What does this mean? This means that each I sub n is I, it's the intersection of multiples of valuation or a volt of valuation ideals over different n, where here V1, VR are divisorial valuations uh, and lambda one, lam this should have been in R. Uh, this is in, uh, this is non-negative real numbers. Okay, so uh, one can uh, consider the case where these guys are all, uh, uh, where these guys are all rational numbers or integers. So I will give those different names. I need something to, okay. I can, I can erase with this. Okay, so in the case where uh, these guys are all rational numbers, call this a rational 
if the lambdas are all uh, rational, then this is a uh, is a Q divisorial filtration. And uh, if uh, they're in Z, then this is Z divisorial. So this is the most this is the most natural one, the Z divisorial one. Okay, so uh, a couple examples showing that this comes up naturally is uh, let's let i equals uh, i sub n be an attic, an i attic filtration. And this is on a uh, local uh, noetherian ring. Uh, and uh, then uh, we take the filtration J is equal to I n bar, where I n bar is the integral closure. Of I to the n. Okay, and then uh, this is a this is in fact a is a Z divisorial filtration uh, and the valuations V1 to VR are the so-called Reese valuations. Okay, this is the theory of Reese. Uh, so uh, also um, another example is if you take uh, P, uh, a prime ideal, uh, in say a regular local ring, R, uh, then I can take the uh, uh, the filtration, the symbolic, the filtration of symbolic powers. powers of P, uh, and this is uh, P symbolic N. So this is just if I take P to the N, multiply it times R to the P, and then you intersect with R. Okay, so this is a, uh, this is also a uh, Z divisorial filtration. Okay, so then there's this uh, Reese algebra. Uh, the Reese algebra of a filtration I. I will write it in this way. Okay, and here where you benefit from it being a filtration, that makes this into a ring. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this is, uh, make the comment that, well, maybe I'll just say this, that for the iatic filtration, this is, of course, no Ethereum. Uh, but for uh, divisorial filtrations in general, it's not. This thing makes a lot of noise. Is this a camera that's doing that, or? Uh, that didn't seem to have helped. Can 
maybe this is, oh, there's this, this. I have a second. Uh, try, to, try, to, try to, yeah, move it from there. Okay, so maybe I can put this yeah. Yeah. in my pocket or something. Is it good enough on the desk? Okay. So I'm sorry, yeah. I know, I'm sorry, yeah. Anyway, I think, I think this will work, and uh, uh, Matero can make a comment if someone can let me know if it's. Yeah. Where are you? Uh, can you hear me from here? Okay, so this seems to work, and is so. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Okay, so uh, attached to this is uh, an integral closure. We can take the integral closure of this uh, ring. The integral closure of our i in uh, R of t uh, is and this is a, a graded ring associated to a filtration uh, where J sub n uh, is the elements x in R such that x uh, to the R uh, is in I n times R integral closure for some r bigger than zero. Okay, so this is uh, a little more general than the, what you get from the iatic filtration. Okay, uh, so the classical case, if uh, uh, i is, is an Iatic filtration, then Jn is just equal to the integral closure of Ian. You don't need uh, the R here. Okay, so now uh, I, I want to make another comment is that uh, the Ries algebra of a divisorial filtration is always integrally closed. Okay, so now I will uh, define uh, the analytic uh, spread. So I will take uh, uh, no Ethereum uh, local ring uh, and I a filtration uh, then you can define the analytic spread of I is uh, the analytic spread of I uh, is uh, the dimension of the Reese ring modulo the maximal ideal times the Reese ring. So if I is the um, attic, I, if I is an iatic filtration, this is exactly the usual definition of analytic spread uh, that um, after Prangama and I started uh, working with this that uh, we learned that uh, there's another definition of analytic spread of a filtration, which is uh, originally due to Bruns and Schwenzel. It's also, there's work on this by Hoa, Kimura, Tarai, and Chung, and uh, Dao and Montano, and I'm sure there's some other work too that, that I've missed. But uh, it's a related, but there's other questions there which I won't go into today. Okay, but.
This is our definition. Okay, well, the, the first statement and the only statement that we have for general filtrations uh, is the following. Uh, this is uh, with myself and uh, Prangama, which is that uh, the dimension of, or sorry, uh, the L analytic spread of I is always bounded above by the dimension of the ring. Okay, so it might think with all these Noetherian rings, it might be infinite sometimes, but no. Okay, uh, one thing which I will uh, mention is that uh, if uh, we always have this map over here, there's a projection from uh, uh, spec of the result, uh, sorry, proj to spec of R. And uh, the L of I then, the analytic spread of I, is going to be just the dimension of the preimage of the maximal ideal uh, minus one. Okay, so in the classical case of the aetic filtration, this is uh, just the blow up of an ideal. Uh, and this is, uh, so one can uh, check easily, this is a nice birational map, so the fiber can, uh, has to be um, at most dimension of the base minus one, but it's true in this non noetherian case. Also, there's uh, an interesting uh, statement, a nice statement in, uh, for the iatic filtration which is that uh, for the iatic filtration, one has another inequality, which is height of I uh, is uh, less than or equal to the analytic spread of I, which is in our notation analytic filtration of the iatic filtration. Uh, but uh, this is not true. Uh, uh, and a mention about how this is true, that's uh, actually the upper semi-continuity of fiber dimension because this is a proper morphism. We're, yeah. What? Um, let's, did I get it right? Uh, you're right. It's a plus one. Exactly. Yeah, thank you. Plus one. Okay, but this, uh, maybe I'll just write it like this. That in fact, this fails, and it's not difficult to find examples of, um, of uh, just general strange filtrations for which this fails, but even for naturally occurring filtrations, this fails. Uh, and so this is uh, even for uh, uh, two dimension, a height two prime ideal. Uh, P in a regular local ring R of dimension three, so a uh, space curve singularity. Uh, and then you have um, the length of the uh, analytic spread of the symbolic filtration is equal to zero, which is less than the height of P, which is uh, equal to two. So you can do this. So if this occurs, this means that the pre-image of the maximal ideal under this map is the empty set. So somehow this is not a proper morphism. It's not dominant. Okay, so now uh, this is the uh, uh, first uh, main theorem I want to talk about now. And this is uh, the second theorem. So I'll explain why some of these assumptions here are here, where R be an excellent uh, local uh, domain, which is either of equi characteristic zero or of dimension less than or equal to three, uh, and I is equal to I sub N 
a Q divisorial filtration uh, on R. And then uh, the following are equivalent. Uh, the first statement is the analytic spread of I is equal to uh, the dimension of, of R. So that's the maximal analytic spread. Uh, the second is that there exists some and not uh, such that uh, the maximal ideal, maybe I should have written this, is, in, is uh, an associated prime of R mod I n for all n bigger than equal to n naught. And uh, the third statement is that uh, there just exists some such that the maximal ideal is in the associated prime of R mod I m naught. Okay, so these are equivalent and uh, uh, first off I'll mention just the following. The proof is in two halves where the first half is, uh, is uh, one implies two, uh, which is with, uh, with uh, Prangama Sarkar. And this is true much more generally. We don't need all these assumptions. It's just uh, uh, no Ethereum local domain. Uh, and then uh, three implies two. This I did a little later. Uh, and this, uh, the, I'll, hopefully I'll have time to come back and say a, little, a few words about the proof. But that's where these assumptions uh, come in, where I use geometric methods. And the, uh, what I use is resolution. I need resolution of singularities. So in fact, something uh, many people don't know is that actually in his original paper, Hironaka proved resolution of singularities over an excellent local ring which of equicharacteristic zero. So this follows immediately from this. In fact, I've seen people referring to this, and they seem not to understand that Hironaka actually proved this, because the theorem we all know is that he, that of course, is an immediate corollary of this, is the resolution of singularities uh, over, uh, an al over a field, over an algebraic variety. OK, so uh, the, this other one, this uh, dimension less than or equal to three, that uh, uh, Abyankar, of course, about the same time in the mid-60s, proved resolution of singularities for th three-dimensional varieties in a geometric context, at least for uh, characteristic bigger than five. Uh, but about a decade ago, maybe, in a very, very long paper that uh, 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 Vincent Cosar and Olivier Pilton finished it up in dimension three for excellent rings. And beyond that, it's all a mystery that, that we'll see. I mean, it could be in characteristic P, one could make use of some of these uh, uh, De Jong type methods to do something. In fact, that just occurred to me now. That might be a possibility. So that, that's something. That might be a way of, of getting around this, at least in rings essentially a finite type over a field or a perfect field. OK, so uh, I'll say, hopefully I'll say a little more about this, uh, this later. Uh, another uh, comment I want to make is that uh, this theorem generalizes a classical theorem of uh, McAdam and Birch, which uh, can be found in the excellent book by uh, uh, Swanson and Unicke on uh, integral closure, where this is one of the theorems that they uh, uh, they present there. OK, so now uh, on the next topic on epsilon multiplicity. Uh, so we can define the epsilon multiplicity. Of a, of a filtration I equals I sub n uh, 
in a uh, d-dimensional Noetherian local ring uh, is is defined like this. This is equal to the lim soup of n goes to infinity of the length as an R module of the colon ideal. Now this is a saturation of I to the n. You remove the m primary component divided by d factorial. Uh, and of course, this is uh, uh, defined by Berndt and Javid, Berndt Ulrich and Javid Valadashti, uh, who developed many of the properties that for the iatic filtrations and for some, um, some, so for ideals and for modules. Okay, so it doesn't take tremendous amount of imagination to make the extension to, uh, to filtrations. Okay, so uh, this is the, um, uh, the first theorem. Uh, so suppose that I is an attic filtration. Or a divisorial filtration, uh, then this thing exists as a limit. Then epsilon i is in fact equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the lengths of uh, these uh, saturations modulo the ideal. And this exists as a limit. Uh, even for an ideal, this can be a, an irrational number. OK, so now uh, more. Oh, I forgot something. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it, this isn't in complete generality like uh, the definition. This is the R is an analytically unramified, un analytically unramified uh, local ring. And okay, okay. So uh, the next theorem has even more assumptions, but I'll remember to write them this time. Okay. So so really, um, what our theorem is is a uh, is a generalization of this uh, characterization of analytic spread, which we had uh, before. And this is, again, with uh, Rangama Sarkar, uh, which is that had the same restrictions. Uh, let R be a d-dimensional uh, excellent local ring, which is either of equi-characteristic 0 or of dimension less than equal to 3 and I uh, be a Q divisorial filtration uh, on, on R. Okay, then we have that the epsilon multiplicity of I is positive uh, if and only if the uh, analytics spread of I is equal to which the dimension of R. 
Okay, and, and in fact, uh, this theorem is implicit in this paper of uh, Javid and, uh, and Baron, that somehow they write the proof in their papers, but they don't actually quite state it. So, and, and I think other people have maybe pointed this out. Okay, this is uh, this this uh, theorem holds uh, for uh, for ide ideals. And it's in a very general situation. I think it's uh, uh, formally equidimensional, I think. Okay, so uh, there's a, uh, I think what I'll do is I'll try to say a little bit of the proof, and then there's a corollary I might come back to if I, if I have time. So I will say a little bit about how one proves theorem 2 and, uh, and 5. So I'll say some ideas of the proof of theorem proofs of theorems two and four. These are the statements uh, characterizing maximal uh, analytic spread. Uh, and uh, the first case is, uh, and I think I uh, I forgot something. For this one, I need normal. Somehow, I wasn't quite able to get rid of the normal assumption. Uh, and, but I don't need the normal for the theorem 2. Uh, so, and so one can reduce to R being normal. For theorem 4, this is a triviality. OK, so what I do then is I can uh, struct uh, pi from x to spec of r, uh, which is the uh, such that x is pi is the blow up of an ideal, not uh, not anything directly connected to the filtration of some ideal, uh, and this is where I use the resolution of singularities. X is non-singular. Uh, and uh, there exists a, a divisor D equals A1 E1 plus AR ER on X uh, such that uh, such that uh, O uh, uh, if I take the sheaf of this, O, X, N, D, and I take the uh, roundup of this, and I take the sections of this, uh, then this is just going to be equal to I, N. So this converts it into a problem in geometry. Uh, something which I didn't mention here, which I should have, uh, is... Uh, that this is this fails uh, if you if you change this to real divisorial valuations. If it's real divisorial valuations, it fails. Okay, so maybe I should add this here. Two are false, even for our divisorial. Filtrations. Okay, so that's kind of a, a subtlety uh, in this. So this is this is a Q divisorial filtration. Okay, so uh, 
Now, uh, what I'm going to do is, this was the motivating uh, idea for this, where there's a, a case where everything works out uh, very easily, uh, and one can uh, prove all kinds of even more. So I'll mention this, because this is the motivating case. So let's uh, uh, first suppose that uh, the dimension of R is equal to 2. Uh, then there exists, uh, uh, thanks to uh, local form of Zariski decomposition, uh, you can write, uh, you can find Q divisors uh, delta and B such that First off, you can write deltas D plus B. Uh, these are effective, effective, such that uh, delta is equal to D plus B, where we, one has the property that minus D is nef. In other words, uh, every uh, curve which contracts to the maximal ideal has a, um, non, has a non-negative intersection number with this. And uh, B is uh, exceptional for, uh, for pi. In other words, every component here is contracted to the maximal ideal. OK, so and the critical point is that, in fact, we can compute these sections here uh, from, which is, we know, I, this is ultimately In. This can be computed from this. OK, so uh, though especially in dimension two, as uh, uh, Zariski explained to us, uh, and has since been developed um, in higher dimensions, that there's really uh, the numerically effective divisors behave much, much better than uh, uh, than ordinary divisors, even if their suction rings are not finitely generated. And the reason is, uh, <coughs> is that uh, because of the uh, Fujita vanishing theorem. Uh, so we can reduce to uh, the case that uh, minus D is, uh, is uh, nef. OK, so the, the reason why this is so uh, nice is that uh, because uh, good, I'll call them almost vanishing theorems. So basically, if you add a little bit of something extra, you can get vanishing. Hold for the powers of this. Uh, and this is by Fujita. Uh, and in his... Um, uh, in his original paper, he uh, proved this uh, for um, in characteristic p. So in fact, when we use it, we reduce to the case where we're looking over the exceptional uh, fiber, which is a, um, and then if you look at an integral component of it, that's a projective variety over some field, the residue field of the, of the variety. OK, so, uh, uh, and then, we, you can use this to uh, prove theorem two and four in dimension two. Okay, so this was the this was the motivating idea, and this was the first thing I thought of. But then there's a big problem in that this fails in uh, higher uh, dimension. So uh, uh, this. Uh, does not generalize to higher dimension, sadly. Higher means bigger and equal to three. Uh, and these are some old examples by myself and Nakayama. Uh, and in fact, uh, since um, 
really out of time, I'll just say a few things, that Nakayama has some analog of this, a very weak forked version of Zariski decomposition he calls sectional decomposition. Uh, and uh, part of this theory is there's, a, uh, there's an invariant where I guess I can, I can write down what the invariant is. We have about five more minutes, five, six more minutes. We, we start oh, okay, so maybe, um, okay, so maybe I can even write a little bit, bit down then. Okay, so, uh, okay, so maybe that's why I was starting right. Uh, in dimension r bigger than or equal to three, uh, we use a, a, a local version of Nakayama's, this is not the Nakayama's lemma, Nakayama. <laughs> what he calls a sectional decomposition. But you need, uh, this is where we need the uh, non-singularity uh, condition uh, for, it, for it, which is a weak form I'll just say a weak form of Zariski decomposition. which holds in higher in dimension bigger than or equal to three, uh, which uh, 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 to prove theorems two and four. And the, the critical thing that we need in it is a proof requires a delicate analysis of this function, of the function gamma f minus d, or maybe other divisors, in fact, for f, and in the case where f is an integral divisor, which which contracts uh, to MR, the maximal ideal. Uh, and uh, the way you define this is uh, gamma F minus uh, D. This is a limit. It's a, that's a, a small theorem that it's a limit, not just the limb soup. Okay, so now we've pushed the definition uh, back one. What is this tau f md minus md? This is uh, the infimum of the order of g such that uh, g is an effect of a q divisor on x with uh, G uh, linearly equivalent uh, to uh, minus MD on X. Okay, so linearly equivalent means that if you take G, the divisor G, and you add MD to it, it's the divisor of a function on the quotient field of R. So even if this is some, I mean, in this definition, you can take uh, divisors with real coefficients. Okay, so one, one of the subtle things in this is that it's, True for Q, the theorem's Q for two, Q divisors, it collapses for R divisors, but when you take the sectional decomposition, this thing could be a real number. Okay, but the, the thing is, if, it's a, if it is, then you can add just a little more and still stay in your original divisor because the uh, coefficients are integral. And then that puts you in a situation where you can do something, uh, something you can do something with it. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you very much, Dale. Are there any questions? Yeah. 
Uh, no, that occurred to me that, that I would hope that could be done. I haven't tried it, but I would, I would think it probably could be done. But yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. Any other question? Then thanks again, Dale. Yeah.